Steve here with Table Rock Tea Company. Aphids, they are a problem. They are a big problem in a greenhouse. They are a big problem in a greenhouse that grows tea on a commercial scale. As you can see, we run thousands and thousands of plants in a tight space. When you get aphids, you've got to deal with them. Now, there are all kinds of ways you can. Uh, much easier on a small scale than on a commercial scale, for sure. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you'll know that tea is very sensitive to sun. That precludes us using anything like neem oil or any oils, really. Any of your horticultural oils will not work here in a tea greenhouse because you will fry those plants to a crisp. So can't do that. So I'll show you what we do use and I'll show you what we're looking for when we uh, find aphids in the greenhouse. This is also why, consequently, I like to hand water my plants. I like to come in, we look at them twice a week, and we see what's going on, rather than an automated system where we just sort of hands off, no problem. Things can get out of control pretty quickly in a greenhouse because essentially you are a giant petri dish. And so anything that's going to grow in here, plants, but anything else, pests also, because you've got such close proximity, everything's in this tight space, airflow is limited, and so you gotta really be careful. So let me show you what I look for, what tells me that we have aphids, and we do, so, so you'll get to see them today. Uh, they usually start around now, it's the beginning of May, and essentially when all that new growth comes out, that's ideal for the aphids as well. They are a sucking plant, aphids suck. Um, and what they do is they basically uh, tap the bottom of the plant and suck the juices out. So what you're going to see is a leaf curl starting to happen. That's a pretty telltale sign that you can look for aphids. Um, yeah, and essentially they look for the tender, nice part of the plant, the same part that we want. So they usually start, uh, like I said, in May, and uh, they'll run eh, pretty much through the year. So I'll show you how we treat them, show you what we look for and uh, hopefully that'll help you get these under control. So right back behind me, I was watering today, and on these plants, um, what you're gonna see with aphids, ah, I lost it here, hang on a second. Okay, there was a plant here, here we go. So you can see right here that there's leaf curl. It starts to, to curl up. Um, some of the plants will actually start to, to curl this way as the juices are getting sucked from the underside of the plant and those cells are collapsing. The aphids themselves, here's what they look like. They're very small. Uh, hang on, let me back up here. Okay, here we go. See those little dots? There you go. And if you focus in, and sorry, I'm holding my glasses here, but if you focus in on them, um, you can't see them because of this camera, but you can actually see their little bodies pulsing uh, sometimes. Here's, here's leaf curl right here. Hang on a second. Okay, see this leaf right here, how it's curled up? I don't know if you can see that, but it's starting to fold. And sure enough, right under there, there they are, okay? Those are the aphids. And like I said, I, I can't really zoom in very well on these, but those are, those are the aphids. They usually hang out right along the spine of the plant. First thing I'm going to do is mechanically crush them. If I see them, I'll crush them and you just squish them, rub them, but then I'm going to treat them and I'll show you what we use to treat them. That stuff's over here. And again, I have no problem using stuff rightly. That's why we have, you know, good biochemists and all of that. So then I use two products. One is a Zera and two is Asaphate uh 97 up now you'll have to look and see if you're allowed to use these we're a commercial greenhouse so we have certain licenses that let us do things that other people do not um but the way uh these both work we use them alternatively and the life cycle of an aphid is roughly um i want to say it's seven to ten days okay so what you're trying to do is wipe out at least two or three life cycles so that you get not just the parents, but also the eggs and, and that you're wiping out the problem. And so we use these in succession uh, every seven to 10 days. So now that we see them, we're gonna treat them. Um, my usual first line of defense is starting with Azira. And I'll show you why. So Azira back here 
is a concentrated liquid. I believe it is three quarters of an ounce. It's very brown and kind of sludgy looking. Um, it's three quarters of an ounce per gallon, okay? That's the concentration that we use for tea, for aphids. And the way Azera works, from my understanding, and again, sorry if I'm, I'm uh, wrong on this, but is that it's an ingested thing. So, so it, it's, and, and it stays on the plant a little longer. So what happens is the, um, the, the aphid will go ahead, it'll, uh, you, you're spraying the, the leaf, that aphid is going to ingest it, and essentially it, it ruptures its gut. Um, so it takes a little while, but the other thing too is that Azera sticks to the leaf more. So if you apply Azera, if some of those eggs hatch and those babies start to feed on it, they'll die as well. So I, I do like it for that purpose. It gives a little bit of a longevity to it and it's the mechanism is a, a rupturing of the gut. Um, so that's, that's one way. And what happens is if you do that over and over again, you do it every seven to 10 days, um, after a while, the aphids that remain are going to be more or less uh, tolerant. They'll have an immunity to the Azera. So you want to alternate between something else, some different mechanism, so that the ones that don't succumb to the Azera succumb to something else. In that case, we use this, which is that um, Asaphate uh, 7 UP. And Asaphate, um, let me see if I can do all this one-handed here, sorry. Um, that is a granule. So that uh, looks like little rice pieces almost. Uh, let me see if I can... I should do this with gloves, by the way. But that's what they look like, these little, little granules, okay? Um, and I believe that is a half... Uh, half a teaspoon, so that's measured in teaspoons, half a teaspoon per gallon. Stuff really stinks. Um, but that is a, uh, from what I believe, that is more of a neurotoxin So for the bug. So that's one that will kill them immediately. And so it's a surface contact thing. So what I will do is I have a little, um, a little spray bottle here. That's filled with the Asaphate 7UP. So this is a spot spray. So what happens is if in between our applications, remember it's every seven to 10 days, uh, if in between the application, we see aphids break out on certain plants, we'll crush them physically and then we'll spray them with the, um, with the uh, Asaphate UP um, to, to deal with that. We don't wanna go and spray the whole thing again because we, we want to make sure we're not over, you know, toxifying the plants and that kind of stuff. So that's how we alternate. Then as far as spraying in the greenhouse goes, a couple of tricks. Uh, we use backpack sprayers. You can see we've got some fungus weeds. This one's for aphids specifically. So we only put the same, same thing in, in those sprayers. We use a respirator. Uh, this is the one we use here. Um, I'll try to maybe put a link in the comments on this respirator. It's a good one. Um, you need one for sure if you're going to spray in the greenhouse. Um, but one thing that you're going to see on the aphid backpack, all the other backpacks, the nozzle is turned um, in a different direction. It's, it's turned pointing down. Um, in the aphid one, the nozzle's turned up. Why is that? Because aphids like to hang out under the leaves. So if you spray from the top, you're not gonna get the aphids. You have to either come in sideways, like you have to do a high pressure fog so that essentially all of that stuff fogs out underneath the leaves because you want it to, you want anything you use to hit underneath because that's where the aphids are. If you just do a surface spray coming from the top down, you won't get them. So uh, just make sure you do that. It has to either be shooting direct from underneath, so you have to keep you know, pushing the wand in back and forth to spray, or direct sideways where it fans out and gets it that way. Uh, we've done both. And again, you kind of need a high pressure backpack sprayer to do that. So hopefully that helps. Uh, aphids are a real pain in the butt, um, but it's a problem we have to deal with. So. Um, yeah, um, let us know what you think in the comments below. If you got any other solutions, like I said, most of the organic stuff, um, the uh, neem oils and stuff don't work, 
but not to fear actually those two products if you look them up they're really um very close cousins to uh to organics so so it's like a uh, like a pyrethrin based kind of thing so don't worry too much about that and again we only use it in the greenhouse we don't put it on any field or production plants so thanks for watching stay tuned to see what else is brewing here at table rock tea company